Good morning students. Once again, I welcome you all in this online class of biology and students in our previous classes we have discussed about the tissues, the introduction, histology, the types of tissues that is animals and plants and we have discussed about the subcategories of plant tissues that is meristematic ones and the permanent ones. Meristematic ones again are subdivided into apical, lateral and intercalary meristem and the permanent ones are subdivided into simple permanent tissue and complex permanent tissue. Then in simple ones we have discussed about colenchyma, sclerenchyma and parenchyma and in the complex uh, permanent tissue we have discussed about xylem and phloem. With all this we have discussed about the protective tissues that is epidermis, stomata and cork cells. Now from today onwards we will start with the animal tissue subcategories. Ok students, because we have discussed everything about the plant tissues, so now we will discuss about the animal tissues. Hopefully all plant tissues and the subcategories are understood well. So now starting with the animal tissues, today I would like to tell you the brief through this flow chart. See, broadly animal tissues are categorized into four. Epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscular tissue and the nervous tissue. Then again the subcategories are there. Epithelial tissue, firstly we are going to discuss the epithelial tissue. It has the subcategories squamous, cuboidal, columnar, ciliated and stratified squamous. Then connective we have the areolar, adipose, skeletal and fluid. Then muscular we have straighted, smooth and cardiac, the types of muscles and the nervous tissue are part. So today we are going to discuss about the epithelial tissue and its subtypes. The epithelial tissue that is the simplest one it is covering or a protective tissue that is separated from underlying tissue by fibrous basement membrane. Hence they grows on other tissues. They can be simple. Now why I am saying simple because when they are made up of one layer of cell then they are simple and stratified if they are made up of many layers of cells okay so these two types you will find simple when one layer of cell will be there and stratified when one by one many layers will be there now main characteristics of this epithelial tissue are they are tightly packed cells to form a continuous sheet tightly packed means almost no intercellular spaces okay so that's why the continuous sheet is formed now location in our body where this tissue is found, skin, lining of mouth, the blood vessels, the alveoli, the kidney tubules, everywhere here the epithelial tissue is found. It covers the organs and the cavities inside the body and they separate the different systems from, the, from each other, right? That is why this tissue is there because of this layer, the systems are separated. It forms the outer layer of skin right and it protects the body from drying injury and infections as epidermis was there in plants we have the epithelial tissue now the subtypes of this the classification of epithelium on basis of number of layers just now i told you when single layer will be there it is simple and when many layers are there then stratified now regarding the cell shape, on basis of cell shape, if I ask you on basis of number of layers, that will be simple and stratified. If I ask you on basis of cell shape, then it will be squamous, cuboidal and columnar. Squamous means when it is broad, flat, cuboidal having the shape of cuboid and columnar having the shape of columns as you can see in the picture it is very clearly shown right single unit is also shown and the complete this is also shown the simple one and the stratified one simple one as you know single layer so see simple in simple cuboidal single single cells are there right one layer is there and sim this simple columnar one layer of the columns is there whereas in stratified squamous the different layers one above the other columns are there right so see the difference in the picture it is clearly visible now the characteristics of these the structure the location and the function the very first the squamous one 
the cells are very thin they are flat they are irregular cells see the picture it is flat and it is simple also and the location is in esophagus the lining of mouth the alveoli of lungs and in blood vessels here the nuclei is in the center again i would like to show you the picture the nucleus is in the center it is also called the pavement epithelium why because it forms the delicate lining as the floor one right that's why now the function is it protects the underlying tissue from injury underlying tissue whichever tissue is there it protects that tissue from injury as well as exchange of gases in lungs and materials between the cells and blood the next one is the cuboidal epithelium here the cells are having the cuboidal shape again see the picture and the nucleus is round and in the center it's clearly visible it's in the center where it is found it is found in kidney tubules in duct of salivary glands and its main function is it gives mechanical support these two words these gives the mechanical support sometimes the epithelial tissue it folds and forms a gland okay because it is uh, this tissue it forms the gland with these cuboids and they secrete some substance also that time they are called glandular epithelium okay now next is the columnar epithelium when columns are there again see the picture the cells are more tall and less wide pillar like okay they are placed side by side nucleus is where is the nucleus is clearly visible in the picture it is at the base okay now where it is found it is found in the inner lining of intestine in respiratory tract the cells have hair like uh, these structures that move and push the mucus this is cilia that is called ciliated columnar epithelium when they have cilia to move the substance function is it helps in absorption excretion and secretion because of these cilia the last one is the striated squamous epithelium when squamous the flat cells they are arranged in many layers that's why it is squamous it's not simple because many layers are there right and they prevent the wear and tear of the parts the location is it is in the skin to prevent the uh, wear and tear the tongue the esophagus lining right then the function again the protection and it prevent wear and tear that is the striated squamous epithelium we'll discuss about all these more in the live class hopefully you got some idea just go through the three topics in the book and see this information given in this online class with the video the picture is also shown so it's very easily understandable that book so please go through this two three times and in live class again we'll discuss it till the next time thank you and have a great day and yes there are few questions as a recap of this today's online class so just see these questions they are very easy see the video and you will be able to answer these and do them in your notebook okay students Thank you and have a great day.